Ah, oh, so kind, so kind. Hello, friends. How are we all? It's really nice to see so many people I know now in the audience. Oh, I've got a lectern and everything. Um, and a thing. Brilliant. Um, hi. I'm, I'm, we're ahead, so I can give you an extra half an hour. Only kidding. <laughs> Only kidding, guys. Um, welcome. So, yeah, this, this is this the... Um, that's the spotlight. I, I don't know how I can follow pictures of cats being put through showers. Um, so I shall, I shall just be really boring and, and, and dull, shall I? No. Um, right, so I've got to talk to you about some essential stuff coming up in terms of employment contracts um, that you need to know about. Um, very happy to do it for you. Um, we had a request, two requests, in fact, to talk briefly about people walking out of their job and what happens then. I will mention that. Um, if any of you are thinking about IR35, you're big enough to care. We'll touch on that briefly. If you've got any contractors who might need to be looked at. Um, uh, very briefly, one slide on Brexit, the usual same slides, normal. And then I will just mention the surgery. So this is the hotline. This is a picture of me. Sorry, this is a picture of my phone. This is, I sit at my, at my, at my mahogany desk with my quill um, and my, my leather-bound copies of the Alding Law Reports behind me and that phone, and I just sit looking at it, waiting for you to call, because this phone is plugged in only to that number, and this is your number. So please, I'm lonely. Call me. Be my friend. Call me more. 15 minutes of free love. <laughs> I mean, how much better can it get? I'm pleased to say that increasing numbers of you are doing it, but do remember, um, it is entirely free, it's entirely me. Oh, I'm a poet and you wouldn't know it. And, and um, it's, it's good stuff. So um, it's great to see more people uh, using it. Please, please do, because it's there and it's, um, it's, it's great. So um, also, just, just, to, just to remind you and to give you more enthusiasm for, for calling me or getting your colleagues to call me, this is recent things we've been doing for you in this room and some of you who aren't at the conference this time. Um, tribunal claims, uh, a couple of big ones um, have happened recently that we've, uh, we've helped SPA members with. They, they, they do come along occasionally. Um, quite a few redundancies, just ones, twos here and there that might be a bit contentious um, and, and the, uh, the company wants us to talk through. Um, changes the contracts, and we'll touch on that in a sec. Um, dis the usual run-of-the-mill disciplinaries warnings, dismissals, grievances, moans and groans, um, and so on, we're always helping with. Um, got an interesting sex and maternity discrimination one at the moment. Um, someone who's about to fail their probationary period and in the same week go off uh, on maternity leave and what to do. Do you fail them and, 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 and risk, or do you just put them on maternity leave and pause it and say, when you come back, we'll go straight into your dismissal. Um, we're going for option B because then, you know, we're, we're entirely pregnancy friendly. Um, but that was an interesting one, just just uh, just Monday, uh, Friday, and and then a commission dispute, which is interesting. It's a lot of technical law about which commission structure applied and whether the letter had been sent, which put the new one in place, or whether the old one was in place, and so on. Uh, so that's stretching out from from pure employment law into into cash. So uh, these are the things we're doing, and and there's lots more as well uh, with you folks. So um, this is the big news. Um, employment contracts are usually a bit of a yawn, aren't they? They're not your favourite thing. You don't wake up every morning and think, you know what? Um, and indeed, when you're hiring someone new, I bet you're not always thinking the first thing was make sure is that they've got their contract signed. Uh, but uh, this, this is the thing. Uh, you really do. And the law is changing to tweak what is required in these contracts and also when you must hand them out. So now you must give them to the employee um, and have them signed at the very latest by their first day of work. Okay. Um, any of you that have been involved in doing the, the right to work check with immigration status or seeing their passport, you may know that that also has to be done by the first hour of them being in your employment, so ideally before they turn up. And so what I would suggest is that as well as doing the right to work check, you get them to come and visit you uh, a week or a few weeks before. You also get this in the bag, this contract. And that's the first thing. There used to be, I think, two-month leeway for you to get the contract sorted out, but now it's, it's, it's day one. So, so it's worth doing that. And it's not just now for your um, full-fat employees. It's also for your, your half-fat um, casuals, workers, those who aren't quite subcontractors or agency workers, but they're not quite employees, that, that middle ground that most people tend to call casuals. They are also now... Um, going to need a contract. It'll be, it may be a casual's contract, but they need it on, on day one. And um, the penalty is still the same two to four weeks 
Um, and it doesn't often come up, but it can be really annoying if you do get hit with it. So, so be aware of that. Um, and there's a number of new things that need to go in the contracts, but the good news is that these are just additions rather than major, major changes, but you do need to get whoever is in charge of the fun of contracts in your organization to update um, what you've currently got. So this is something to take back with you if, if you have influence or you care at all about this area. Um, so they, um, the number of days of the week to be worked may be obvious, but that's got to be stated. Um, how many hours are going to, how, how the hours might be varied. You might have powers to do that. That's got to be really clear in there. Um, all benefits to be mentioned. So there may be certain benefits that you don't. I mean, even things like uh, discounted this or that. Um, I don't know whether you offer any one gym membership or anything. Um, but anything at all that's a benefit needs to just be mentioned in there. It can then refer to another document, like you know, with, with pensions and so on, and say you'll find all the details somewhere else. But you've just got to mention whether it's part of the deal or not. Um, all types of paid leave. That may be obvious, but there could be things where you offer, say, two or three days compassionate leave for someone who, who's, um, uh, who needs it, or you may offer a, a week of paid paternity leave. Um, if you offer any sort of paid, and paid leave, then it's got to be in there. Now, holidays and sick pay, there'll be some reference already in your contracts, then this just adds to that. Um, probationary period. Normally it's in there, but if you have it and it ain't, it's got to go in. And that extends out to things that are a bit like probationary periods, like trial shifts. I don't know if any of you come across that. You've got any shifts? But if you're going to have someone try a different shift, then there has to be some basic uh, mention of that and some of the basic rules. Again, you could refer to a policy that's got more detail if you want that, uh, but that's what you're going to have. Um, details of training entitlements and details of compulsory training as well. So it's, it's all a bit dull and it's all a bit sort of um, uh, additional to the, the, the main deal, but this has now got to be in all your contracts as of the 6th of April. So you say, Luke, have we got to issue them all again? The answer is no. Uh, what you can do is that everyone who's an employee, including your directors who are executive directors, by the way, uh, they can simply get um, uh, a simpler piece of paper. It could be an email or letter covering these new bits if they apply. Or you can do all your contracts again. And it could be a good chance to refresh and renew because I don't know when the last, well, the, the template used was last got out and given an airing. But there have been a few changes recently. So in 2018 in May, the data protection stuff changed. Um, so what I suggest is you uh, have a look at it or get someone to give me a call if you fancy. Use that 15 minutes uh, on the helpline to have a chat with me and see what's necessary. Can I make a suggestion here? Yeah. Uh, bearing in mind that these um, changes are quite substantial, mm. could we redraft the, it, yeah. the SPA? It, absolutely. Terms yeah. It will be done. Yeah. Have no fear. That would be great. So, so if, uh, can I just have a show of hands? Who uses the SPA contracts of employment at the moment? So we've got plenty of companies already yeah. using it. Yeah. So perhaps yeah. um, it will happen. For those who have them, we'll get them redrafted, and for those who haven't, perhaps hold fire, and it might be an opportunity mm. to use the SPA contract. Whether you use the new one. Uh, and you want to reissue or whether you just want me to have a look at what you've got currently and, and tweak, um, and whether you just issue a, 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 some sort of email to everyone. Um, do. Oh, this is very, very dull, but it is, a, it is quite a substantial change. So there you go. Um, that's that. Very exciting. <laughs> Audit. And remember your director service agreement. Anyone who's got one of those, um, they are, you're also an employee uh, if you're an executive director, so you do need that looked at as well. And while we're on the subject of director service agreements, do you have them for your directors? Do you have a different level? Hands up who's got a different, bigger, fuller, more exciting contract for their directors? One, two, possibly not really sure. Um, it's, it's, it's really worthwhile having directors and other really senior, important managers having something a bit beefier, probably, than your standard contract that you'd have for someone who's working in, in production or something. And I'd recommend that. Um, making sure that you can properly protect the business in terms of confidential information, IP, post-employment competition. Do you want them being able to go off straight away, for example, and work for a competitor, taking all of your trade secrets and your company information? Because um, the, the, the basic law, if it's not in a contract with them, can only help you so much. And sometimes you might want just a bit more. Um, it's, if you've got a basic contract and you're, you're, you're a key person, it's quite easy to go off and be taking customers, uh, names, uh, financial details, trying to poach colleagues and so on. 
And um, it may just be an opportunity for you to think about, do we want something a bit more? So again, I would encourage you, if you're slightest bit interested in this, um, give me a call on the hotline, and I'll talk to you about it, and then you can decide what you want to do. But uh, worth, worth bearing in mind. And we've done quite a few cases recently where we've happened to be exiting uh, directors uh, on behalf of companies, and uh, where there's not a, not a great contract there that protects the business, that can be quite unhelpful. So I'd rather we did prevention rather than cure. You know what they say about that. Um, right, this is, this is one we've had quite a few recently. I don't know whether there's something in the water. Um, but we've had a number of um, businesses ring us up and say, so-and-so has just walked out and not, not working their notice period, and what's going on, and what can we do? Um, so I thought I'd just touch on it. The, the, most of the answer is, well, not a lot, really. If they don't, for any day you don't work, you don't get entitlement to pay. So if they just walk out and they don't serve their notice, you don't pay them for, their, for the days that they're not there. Well, that's simple. What about a crude holiday? Um, you do have to pay their accrued holiday that accrued up to the day they went, even though it sticks in your throat because they've just left you in the lurch. It's very tempting to not want to do that. And you could just sit back and, and not do it and wait to see what happens, but technically you're meant to pay it. And I can, I can imagine that if you conveniently forgot out of, you know, through your anger, that might be understandable, but technically you owe it to them. Um, what else? Um, so we had a couple of cases recently where a client said, well, actually, the person that's walked out I know that we're saving by not paying them, and we can get someone else into cover or to replace them, and therefore, you know, it ends, out, ends up more or less cost neutral. But in a couple of cases, clients said, um, actually, it's going to cost us more because we're going to have to get an agency worker in. And in one of the cases, the person had to be particularly qualified um, by law. It was in the care sector, and to run this particular um, old people's home, they had to be registered and qualified to quite a high level. And they had to go to the agency, and the agency was charging them three times as much. Uh, compared with the salaried position. And so the client said, can, can, we, can, we, um, can we deduct this extra cost from their final pay because it's not the end of the month yet and we've got, we've got their, their, their pay ready? And the answer is, mm, well, it depends how much fun, what risks you want to take in the employment tribunal. And the law isn't really clear. Um, so my advice is that if you're having us look at your contracts or you want the new one in, mention to me if you're interested in that point and I will pop something in to say that if someone leaves you in the lurch and it ends up costing you more than the saving you're making on not paying them because of that lurch, that you could potentially recoup that from them, either out of any pay that you've got left that you might owe them or any holiday accrual that you might owe them, or you could just demand it as a debt. But it might be useful. This may only happen to you once every 20 years or so, but it might just be, like many things in the contract, just very helpful if you do find yourself in the lurch. Um, Bearing in mind also, yeah, it's, it's the compensation clause, it's, it's, it's good to have. So that's that point. Um, IR35. Um, yeah, isn't it great? Isn't it great? I love a room when I talk about IR35, and those who aren't glazed over already, there's one over there who's not completely awake to sleep yet. Um, you, you, you start to glaze, I can see it happening. The eyelids are heavy, listen very carefully. Um, so, unless you are exempt because you are two or three of these things in brackets, small, and some of you are and some of you aren't, uh, then the IR35 changes will come in, which means if you have any contractors, you suddenly get these glorified policemen and tax collector duties uh, on top. Yes. Um, yes, let's see now. Yes, I wonder if it was whether a senior moment. Because I've got a few, few grey hairs here just starting to come in, and I'm a bit worried about them. And I wonder that, let's see. So, yes, um, you're right. Turnover, yeah, it's actually turnover under. Thank you. Turnover under. I'm sure it was just a slip on the keyboard. Turnover under 10.2, balance sheet under 5.1 million, or it's actually 50 or fewer uh, employees. But that's the, that's the threshold. Ignore the signs and just look at the, figure, look at the numbers. Thank you. Yes. At senior moment. Um, it was a Sunday, and uh, parts of my brain just don't come online on Sundays. Um, so unless you are exempt because of what's in the bracket, you've got to tick two or three of those boxes, then you will get these new duties, and so that will affect some of you. And the duties are, if you've got a contractor, and they are through a personal service company, so Joe Bloggs offers his services through Joe Bloggs Limited, that is where I-35 might be relevant. If it's directly with just Joe Bloggs, 
IR35 doesn't apply. This is about personal service companies, where you create your own limited company just to put your services through to, 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 to get tax efficient. And the IR35 says that um, if, uh, the, if that situation arises, then the, uh, then the revenue applies a test. The test is, imagine that the personal service company didn't exist. Would this person really fit as an employee? Would they really be doing employee things in the business? And the answer is often yes. And they are, they are tightening the grip a great deal. So the change is that already that exists, but now the employer is going to be responsible for checking and confirming and policing that. And the employer, or the, 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 the engaging client, the end user, is going, to be, is, is going to have the revenue coming down them like a ton of bricks if they get it wrong. So it's taking a lot more of the, uh, of the policing of it and the responsibility away from the revenue and from the contractor onto the end user, client, employer, whatever. So some, for some of you in this, in this room, that will apply. And some of you will have contractors. You may have none at the moment, you may get one coming up. Of course, IT is a regular one. There are quite a few finance um, directors who like to have their own limited company and uh, move from job to job. Um, and that's quite cheeky, because uh, they usually know that they are really employees, because they're working in the middle of your business. Uh, but it's, it's worth bearing around. So if any of, you, any of you have contractors that you think might fall into that position? Currently not, that's as good, but bear it in mind. Bear it in mind, because it's going to be quite a big change, and uh, you don't want to come, become the wrong end of the revenue for this. I'm sure there are all sorts of other things where you know, you know and love the revenue, and they know and love you in your special ways, but this is one that you, know, you don't need the extra aggro, so bear that in mind. Well, what can I say? I, I searched for various photographs that would, that would sum up the, the, the full variety of our glorious Prime Minister. Um, and this one I thought covered all bases, really. Um, so, the slides I said before, the last three conferences are no plan changes, and yet, and still at the moment, there are no plan changes. Um, I've told you before, all, all employment law in the UK is employment law that's been um, adopted by the UK Parliament, so it's ours, it's not foreign, or at least it's, it's now ours and foreign, a bit like chick tikka, you know, and tikka masala. It's become ours. And that's the, the only time you'll ever find an employment lawyer likening employment law to a curry, <laughs> at least today. Um, but watch this space, because you know, there, there could be some shaking up. We're about to enter the golden age. Are you all ready? Everyone ready for the golden age, by the way? I'm, I'm so bloody ready for the golden age. I cannot wait. Apparently, it's um, very soon. So let's, let's see what's going to happen. Um, as, as to what's going to happen with employment law, I don't know, but it'll be golden, folks. So that's, that's important. I'm glad we've got real clarity on that. I'm really happy about that. Um, so just like Boris's hair. Brilliant. Fantastic. Um, so no change on that moment. And, oh, come on, slide. Ah, fine. I'm going to finish, and I might be ahead of schedule. You may have some questions. So I'll do questions in a minute. Um, but first of all, this is me. The lawyer is currently in. Um, in order to give you more access to pick my brains, even if you haven't used me before, or you like the idea of the hotline, but you forget about it by the time you get back uh, to your busy lives, um, what I'm happy to do is sort of bring that to the conference. So before conference um, and uh, during breaks and um, lunches and anything else, and afterwards between the end of conference and dinner, um, should you feel that you'd love to spend 15 minutes with a lawyer, you know I'm not a real lawyer, um, uh, then um, feel free. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll come up with a system, um, mostly probably via me in a notebook in my pocket, uh, giving, you, giving you slots. And you can book them in advance if you want to email me or contact me beforehand and grab me. I know, Ken, you've done it before now. It was, it was very nice to sort of have it arranged. And you, you grabbed me somewhere at the back of the room. But that, that's very much, very much so uh, the case. Not. Sorry. <laughs> not in this day and age. It was in, a, in a manly, in a manly and entirely fraternal way. Um, hashtag me too. <laughs> Our best laugher of the day for me. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so if you, if you want to do that, that's very fun. That's bringing the hotline to you on a plate. There you go. What more could you want? So uh, try me out. If you haven't used me and you're wondering, well, how does he compare with uh, the, the, uh, the other uh, legal advice we get or the HR advice we get, then uh, you know, you've, you've seen a little bit of, of Luke the Fool up here in front of you. I can be more sensible when you get me face to face as, as plenty of people will demonstrate, uh, including Ken. Um, 
and uh, it would be, be a real pleasure. And I will be around um, for the rest of the day, so any of you that want to have a, have a chat, anything that's topical um, or becoming topical, that would be an absolute pleasure. Um, any questions, any burning questions about hiring, firing, grievances, disciplinaries, maternity leave, or anything else? Look at you all. Very happy. Okay, that's great. Well, in that case, that's, I, I, I've been Luke, you've been amazing. <laughs> and I shall um, leave you to the next exciting part. Thank you very much.